The Chicago Sky season ended and the WNBA playoffs are going on, but the work is not done for several Chicago Sky players and GM Jeff Pagliosha. On today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about the work ahead in this offseason for Angel Reese and Camila Cardoso and what the Chicago Sky should be focused on during this offseason and one key free agent acquisition that I think could help the Sky add a veteran punch. All that plus the mailbag right after this. Welcome to Chicago Sky Central, and here's your host, Hayes. What's going on, Sky fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Sky Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Sky related. I'm the host, Air Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Chicago Sky Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this content for today. So first up on the docket, Angel Reese. So Angel Reese has provided an injury update in regards to her recovery. She said this, my recovery has been great. Just continue to do whatever the doctor tells me and obviously can't do much. I was able to get a removable removable brace now, so that's great. So that process has been really good for me, just being able to continue to work out. I've been able to just continue to run, do some things with one hand, not much, but being uh, able to kind of stay in shape the best I can. Hopefully October 8th, I'll be able to figure out what's next for me. So hopefully this brace comes off and I can actually start physical therapy with my hand and get back to full motion. And then I'll be able to be to go full go on things. I have a list of working on. So this is a really good step as far as with the injury, right? Is that, you know, she's focused on the improvement that needs to be done because our rookies do have improvements. And, you know, Angel Reese having an injury at the end of the season. Yeah, it was a hairline fracture. I'm glad that they caught it early before it was something that was more debilitating and could have really affected the work that she uh, is able to do this offseason. We know she's going to be playing in the unrivaled league as well. And so Angel Reese already kind of being focused on, you know, what she needs to work on and what she wants to work on as well. So her getting through physical therapy, I, I you know, I've, I've had a broken wrist before. It You know, wrist can heal pretty fast because so many small bones in there. And because it wasn't like anything that was a complete fracture, it was a hairline fracture, um, she should be able to, you know, get going. And again, no rush, right? I don't think anybody wants to rush. Angel Reese on anything like that, but she does, you know, to to be able to get back into working out, to get back into training, to get back into improving things on her game, that's really important for her and the Sky's future this offseason. And so that brings it to this question. What what does Angel Reese and Camila Cardoso really need to work on this offseason? And it really is kind of very similar for both players, right? Um, When you look at Angel Reese, she was one of the least efficient players in the WNBA around uh, around the rim. 44.5% 44.5% in the restricted area and 11.1% between five to nine feet from the basket. That's what Angel Reese shot this year. And again, uh, this isn't to completely crap on Angel Reese or anything like that. What she was able to do defensively, she is in the running for defensive player of the year. She also got an MVP vote, which seemed to anger some people, which, you know, I, you know, one thing that I am happy with as far as stepping away from the season is just the stands and the idiots. And you know, that's just, you know, people who just like to just make muck up things and just make a mockery of everything. But with that said, Angel Reese, you know, needs to work on those things. The efficiency around the rim definitely can be a lot better. And the 11th percent between five and nine feet, we need to improve on that. If Angel Reese can develop out to 10 feet, a solid jump shot there. And I know she's had it in other, you know, levels of basketball before in high school and in college, but it's very different in the WNBA when you're facing the length and the athleticism every single night that you're going to be facing. Um, but uh, Angel Reese that can k- extend out from 9 to 10 feet, that really opens up so much because with her ability to pass, that opens up a little bit more for Camila Cardoso to go to work, right? And if we have better shooters, hopefully, next next season, which we'll get into that on what g- the GM needs to work on as far as improving uh, this team as well, that goes a long way uh, for this team as well. And so yeah, Angel Reese, solid. if she can get better on the footwork, right, if she can get better in finishing around the rim, especially through contact, considering the way that she rebounds the basketball and can expand that shot profile some, that's going to go a long way in Angel Reese's game, taking another step up. Now, for Camila Cardoso, who has, you know, finished the season on injury as well, she's going to go play over in in China, so we know she's going to be going over there. She finished shooting 55.2% near the rim in the restricted area, and she needs, she's also said that she wants to add a mid-range game. And so what's interesting about this is that if you have two bigs, right, you're going to need three-point shooting, and maybe maybe Angel Reese eventually over her career as well can develop kind of more of a, of a three-point shot. We've seen her take some as well. I think, hell, her last shot this season before she went down with injury was a three-point shot. 
Um, but if Camilo Cardoso can be more efficient around the rim, I'm talking about take that 55.2% and turn that into more 58, 60% around the rim, and she can add some touch, which we saw her develop over time, in a mid-range, not, not, I don't want her to see in their mid-range as much as I want to see Angel Reese in the mid-range, for example, next season. But if she can do that, uh, you know, have a solid mid-range shot to where pick and rolls, things like that, pick and pops, you're able to do a little bit more of that. I think that could be really big for, for Camila Cardoso in her game next season as well. So, you know, we'll be covering it, especially Camila Cardoso over in the Chinese League. Kennedy Carter's going overseas to play as well. Apparently, she missed her invitation to Unrival, which sucks. Um, and Angel, these two ladies, especially being the um, the, the towers, the sky towers, in, in a way, for the Chicago Sky, you know, if they can improve and add those wrinkles to their game next season, that goes a big way in helping improve the Chicago Sky and the offense. But it doesn't come down to just those ladies. What does the, the, the Chicago Sky's GM and Jeff Pagliosha need to focus on this offseason? And to me, it starts with a few things. Backcourt, right? We need some more scoring. We need better passing. Yes, we got Kennedy Carter. Uh, uh, hopefully, I'm, you know, I'm, nothing's a foregone conclusion. She's a restricted free agent. So I think that the Sky are going to protect her. I think the Sky are going to give her the money that she deserves. Probably is going to be a one-year deal, though. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but, uh, you know, getting and adding something to the backcourt as well. When you look at it, right, with the Chicago Sky, this is why we need to, we need to progress in passing. We need to progress in three-point shooting. We need to progress in, in spacing. When you look at it, the Sky were eighth in the league in turnovers, averaging 14.3 turnovers per game. A lot of that is because we couldn't make an entry pass to save our lives. We got to improve on that. Also, the Sky made the fewest three-pointers in the league in 2024, and we need more than that. Also, when you look at it, we were 11th in offensive rating and 11th in assists. Keep in mind, there are only 12 teams in the WNBA, so that's not good. Like, if you said that in the NBA, that's a lot different. The Sky were bottom of the league in a lot of key areas, bottom of the league in offensive rating, bottom of the league in assists, bottom of the league in three-point uh, three-pointers made towards the bottom of the league, the second kind of half or, or third of that league in turnovers per game. We have to improve our guard play. That is hugely important for the Chicago Sky, and I would love to see them address that, that need in the draft. There are a lot of point guards in this draft. We've already talked about it. Uh, basically, ad nauseum, and you guys know we'll be covering that over the course of this WNBA season as well, just who the, the Sky can go after and things like that. The Sky do have a 17% chance at getting the number one pick, but we don't want that. And not to say that we don't want the player, that if we get the number one overall pick, Dallas can take our pick. So the Sky want to stay at either three or four, or they want Dallas to move up to number one. And then at that point, wherever the Sky falls, where the Sky falls. So that's what you kind of want to see with the Chicago Sky. Uh, there's, you know, a lot of mock drafts have different things. But that's going to change a lot between now and the start of the season, even though the mock draft that I trust the most has the, the Sky picking Anisha uh, uh, yeah, Anissa uh, Morrow, which is a small forward out of LSU, and then us picking uh, Tahina Papau at number 10. So in that case, the Sky get their, uh, their, their small forward of the future and the point guard of the future. And, and keep in mind, Anissa uh, scored 18 points per game last season, 18 and 11 in college last season. And Tahina, we already know what she can be, right? So, you know, that's not, we'll get into the list of players I would like to see the Sky draft, but that's really the Sky's focus right, is getting better guard play, getting and adding some more three-point shooting to help the spacing and some better passing. And I actually have, and I saw an article on this, and I actually really like uh, this, is that an early target for the Chicago Sky in free agency is Natisha Heideman. Now, this is, uh, you know, she could be a really good uh, free agent pickup for the Chicago Sky. Now, keep this in mind. This is not a player that you're looking at and Natisha, she played with the Lynx uh, this past year. You're not necessarily looking at her to come in and be your starting point guard. You're looking more at her bringing some of that what we hope Dana Evans could be. She'd be the perfect Dana Evans replacement, 5'8", 135 pounds. Look at the course of her WNBA career. She's a career 37% from three-point shooter, taking three and a half per game. So, again, that adds some needed spacing as well there. She's also a solid assist person at 2.4, but the ball doesn't stick. Now, she hasn't had the type of eye-popping seasons, but when you look at it, she's been extremely healthy over the course of her WNBA career. The last two seasons, playing all 40 games, both last two seasons, last season with the Lynx, the season before that with the Connecticut Sun. And so this is a player that comes in, can add some needed three-point shooting, can add some depth, right, that the Sky need 
again, you still have to draft your starting point guard of the future, but I like what she can do as a floor spacer, and she can create a little bit as well in that time. Now, if you still bring back Brenda Maxwell as well, you have some great shooting off the bench if you're able to do that. The Brenda Maxwell thing, we'll wait and see how that goes. We don't exactly know how that's going to play out yet, but that's another thing that the sky could very well look at. But the thing that I'm saying in this, and I said we we're going to get to it, I've talked a little bit about this in live streams before, but it's been over a week since the Sky's last game. So I want to have this conversation again. The WNBA is going towards the Players Association is probably going to opt out early at the end of next season out of the current uh, CBA. What that's going to allow with new TV money coming in, with the new revenue, all these type of things, that's going to allow this, the, the, the Players Association to fight for higher average salaries for these WNBA players. And so while like now the highest paid players making like $200,000, right? Um, you know, we could very well start seeing where, you know, 50K or I'm sorry, where 80K, 90K, 100,000 becomes kind of more the norm for your high level players. And then of course you're getting closer and closer to a million dollars, uh, you know, for some of your other players. So the salary cap is going to rise. The contracts are going to rise. So you're going to see a lot of one-year deals, meaning that even like a target, like I would love to see the Chicago Sky go after in Satu, um, could end up signing a one-year deal just to stay with their team, whereas they then can go out in free agency the next year and get an even bigger contract. Now, she could still sign a one-year deal with somebody else and then re-up that contract at the end of that with teams that would be like a mutual understanding. But do not be surprised if Kennedy Carter ends up even being a restricted free agent just signs a one-year deal. Because I tell you what, Regardless if the future's with the sky or not, which we hope that the future's with the sky, if that Kennedy Carter has another season like she did last season, especially if the sky add another point guard that's a better shooter and distributor to open some more lanes up for Kennedy Carter to get creative like she does, Kennedy would be one of the players that's probably going to benefit the most. When you look at the combination of age, right, the combination of her role that's going to be here on this team as being a big-time perimeter scorer for this team, that she's going to be able to get a lot of money when those contracts rise. So because of that, you're probably going to see a lot of one-year deals, and Kennedy Carter may also be one of those players that signs one of those one-year deals. But I kind of wanted to preface and, and kind of explain that to where if you do see a Michaela Oniwerde, if you do see a Kennedy Carter, if you do see these players that sign a one-year contract extension, that's going to be the reason why. It's, you're going to see that because of them preparing themselves for the money. We see the same thing in the NBA almost every time the CBA is coming up and there's expected to be a large rise that the players, especially the top players in the in the NBA kind of plan around that. You see their contracts come up the year before, the year after a new CBA so they could take advantage of getting back on that market and getting the rise in contracts. So that this may be the first time we well, this is the first time we'll ever really see this in the WNBA. So there're going to be a lot of players that kind of try to time their deals to make sure before injuries, before anything happens, they get a chance to lock in their money. So that's something that I just wanted to do as part of the preseason primer is to look at that, right? Because there is a big chance that a lot of these players that we like end up signing one-year deals. That's why you saw like an Elizabeth Williams signing a one-year contract extension with the Sky because she knows that money is going to be out there in the 2026 offseason. So be on the lookout for that. I just wanted to point that out uh, so you guys kind of were aware of that. So that way, going forward, if I talk about things in the frame of potentially a one-year deal, that's why I'm talking about it as if it's a one-year deal. So there you guys go. But with that said, I wanted to catch up on the mailbag. We had did take a week off. This first voicemail, this one's from Nate. What's going on? Hey, this is Nate. So I had a, I had a quick uh, question, you know, saying uh, if you see how, like, free agency planning out. I, I know it's a... A while away, but I know the you know the expansion draft is in uh, I believe November. Um, also, a quick thing about that: uh, <clears throat> I know the uh, for the expansion draft and the W, they can either pick one of your restricted free agents or an unrestricted free agent. You know, some restrictions, but they they actually can grab Mikhail Anuary, who is a restricted free agent, because they're not grabbing Dana. But as far as Sapu is concerned, uh, I know when NECA – uh, let LA know like she wasn't coming back, and she went to Seattle. Seattle traded LA their lottery pick as like a hey, since you didn't core her, and you know we don't need this lottery pick, we'll trade you this lottery pick and such and such. Uh, do you see the sky say we can get Satu and 
and they don't core her, Dallas doesn't core her, because I know Natasha Howard is also a free agent, do you see the sky like, hey, well, since you didn't core her, here's our lottery pick? I don't see it because, you know, we need all the picks. Because that's, I know what you want to say. We get Satu in the right point guard. That's literally a dynasty in the making. I know that's like you want to tip your tongue. I like, I know what Hayes wants to say. That's a dynasty in the making. You know, it's, it's the right picks. But do you see the sky like, hey, well, you know, I, I would think if they do something like that, they were like, hey, here's a 2026 first. Not both of them, but here's one and maybe a second round pick. You know, like here's sweet in the pot, you know, for thanks for letting her walk right to us. So uh, appreciate the content. I right, talk to you later. Thank you. Okay. So you're right. His historically restricted free agents could be picked up in expansion drafts. Now, we don't know exactly how the expansion draft is going to work this upcoming year. The sky could, I mean, the, uh, the, the league could kind of change and re kind of configure those rules a little bit. Each expansion draft in the WNBA has been a little bit different, right? For the most part, it stays the same, but a little bit different. Now, to your question here, though, which I think is a great question, by the way, would the Sky give up a lottery pick to pick up somebody like Asatu, right? And here's what I'll say, is that if the Sky are confident, keep in mind, free agency, uh, you know, so a lot of that happens before the draft. So we'll know, right? So if the Sky are, feel confident that they can lock in Satu, then, then they may. But like I said in the last segment before I ended, because a lot of players are going to sign one-year deals, I don't think that the Sky are going to be willing to give up a lottery pick when their pick next year could go to the Lynx, right? So I don't think they're going to be willing to give up a lottery pick to sign a player just because, especially if that player only wants to sign a one-year deal. Now, if Satu is willing to lock in for two or three years, maybe they're more, hey, I'm just using Satu because you brought her up. It could be any marquee free agent. But, um, but because of that aspect, because a lot of players are probably going to sign one-year deals, I don't think the Sky are going to be willing and should not be willing to give up a lottery pick for somebody who could potentially be a one-year rental, if that makes sense. Let me know what you guys think on that down below. All right, let's get into this next one. This one's from Brooklyn. Yo, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Brooklyn 80. I just wanted to call in and give everybody some perspective. I know this year has been tough with the losing. Losing is never easy. Um, it's been weighing on me, too, even though... Um, I think it's the right thing to do. It's the best thing to do. It's still been weighing on me, so I know it's tough. But I want people to start thinking about um, the business of basketball, too, right? Um, we have a GM that went out and did amazing things for us this year and next year. This year, we got lucky. You know, Dallas controls our first-round pick. They happen to be trash this year. That was a blessing for us, and I didn't want us to score you know, waste that blessing. So the fact that the Dallas is the second seed with it, you know, with a third seed right now, hopefully we stay in that third seed, we control our destiny. That's super important because next year, Minnesota also controls our pick. And Minnesota probably isn't going to be bad. So we need to be as good as we can. We need to have a great draft, a great free agency, and try to be as good as we can next year so that we could keep up with the Minnesota Lynx because we're probably not going to have a better record than them. So they're going to take our pick, right? It's only going to hurt if we're, if, if, you know, if, if they, if they have a, if, if, if we're not close to them in the draft, if we, if we're close to them in the draft, then it's not going to hurt bad if they take our pick. So next year is the year that we really want to be in the playoffs. Next year is the year that we really want to win and try to control our destiny again next year. So that's why this year is super important for us to lose these games, even though it's tough, get a better uh, draft pick, and then try to really ball out and win a lot of games next year to try to stay close to the Minnesota Lynx. So next year is the year that everybody should be rooting and trying to make the playoffs, not this year. This year, let's, it's tough. Let's take, let's take our L's, but let's have a great draft so that we can have a competitive team next year. Um, yeah, I I agree with you that Dallas being as bad as what they were has was absolutely turned out to be a blessing for the Chicago Sky. I don't think too many people should argue with that. Like if if Dallas would have been better, right? Let's say that they would have been let's say the Dallas Wings would have been a, a fifth seed or a sixth seed, we would have been screwed, right? Because not only then would we have fallen out of the lottery and given up a lottery pick to a team that was in the playoffs, we're moving all the way down in that draft. At least this way, even if we do, let's say, get lucky and get the number one overall pick and the Wings, of course, take that pick from us, we're still going to be in the top three, right? 
And so we still get a hell of a talent in that case as well. And so I think that that plays a part. And then the Sky were also blessed in the fact that this team is good. This is a good basketball team, right? It's not great. We got some things that we definitely need to settle, but we weren't as bad to be a bottom three team in this league. We weren't that bad had we been able to stay healthy. So the Sky are going to be able to add some talent to a team that, had they been 100% healthy, would have been competing for a playoff spot. And I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, as far as being in the playoffs next year, yeah, I do think that that's, and that's a great point there as well, is that you want to be in that area to where you can get, if you're a playoff team next year, you benefit from that because then you're looking at it like, like, uh, yeah, then at that point, if the Lynx take your pick, right, as a pick swap, you know, you want to be close to that, as close to that as possible. So you're not falling down too much. So all great points. As always, Brooklyn, thank you for leaving that. Let's get into this last one. This one's from Tech. Uh, Seneca for an 8 one I was just uh, thinking about the Chicago Sky season in the second half. Then it's a bad second half, but as the team is constructed, we just weren't meant to. We didn't, we didn't never had that depth. When our, all our players are on, we're very good. But we just we don't have the depth to lose key players. Lost Kennedy and Angel. But when all our players are on depth, we can compete with anybody. But we just don't have the depth to really compete when we lose big players. Sometimes we can make it, but the second half, we just never had all our players on deck. I just hate we ended like that because it makes our team look so bad. We're, we're better than that altogether, but we just don't have the depth to, 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 to be able to deal with big key components being down. So, But I think the sky is still a limit. The sky. When we, even as a team constructed, when we're healthy, we feel much better than what has been shown in the second half. And we got draft picks and then the ability to get other players. And just healthy with better. So I'm just looking for let's get healthy next season. Let's draft well and let's go. Let's be competitive and let's get that playoff spot next year if we don't get it this year. All right. I don't agree that the sky could have competed with any team, even if they were 100% healthy, mainly because of our lack of shooting, our terrible passing, and the statistics that I gave you before. Bottom of the league in three-point shooting. Bottom of the league in assists, right? Bottom of the league in offensive rating. You can't be bottom in that much and say that you can compete with anybody. Now, I will say the fact that the Sky were that ba bottom in that many categories and still would have been a playoff team, that shows that we have a really solid foundation to build off on, and now we just got to see that through, and that's up to Jeff Pagliosha on how he's going to build this thing out. And let's hope that he has that vision. Like I said, he er he's earned my trust so far. I have trust in Jeff Pagliosha. Let's see if he can get it done. But that's my time for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I wanted to kind of reset this. This is the last episode of this week. Next week, I'll start delivering. I'm going to try to do three episodes each week uh, doing my season review of the players that were on the Chicago, Chicago Sky last season and reviewing and grading their seasons. But that's my time. Make sure you guys are following the show at Chicago Sky Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Chicago Sky Central at gmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave a voicemail and our text message like you heard on this show, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Sky related, and that's thanks to you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, see you guys the next time we go to Sky Town. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Break, Break, Break Media. Media.